Hi. Welcome to ECQ. Um, today, I just decided since I had to work on a font, I just decided to go on live and have it streamed so that you guys can watch my process for making and creating fonts. Um, so I'm just going to get jump into it. If you have any questions, just ask me wherever you are. Do let me know if you're on Facebook for Miko Sumulong, Facebook for Mixed Fonts, or on YouTube. I'm just curious to know which channel works best. So here we go. Let me share my screen. OK. So um, I found this watercolor alphabet lying around when I was cleaning up this morning, and I thought, um, why not use this as my font to create today? It's very basic. It doesn't even have lowercase. I think I was just practicing watercolor when I was doing this. Um, sorry if I keep looking to this side of the screen. Um, I'm using a, two screens to work on it. Um, OK, so what I typically do um, when I create fonts is um, I use Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator together. And the plugin that I use to convert it is called Font Self. So let me um, just put that here, Font Self. OK. All right, so I start out here. Um, this one is watercolor texture. And when I create fonts, I typically want it flat or in vector um, so that it's easier to use. So um, what I do when it's textured like this, although font self actually allows you to create textured fonts, but I start out with this. Um, so here, I'm just going to duplicate. Um, I typically just multiply it just to darken it enough. Um, and I do that a couple times um, to start out. So I'm just going to flatten this. And then I change the levels to make it pure black and white. So, or at least as close to black and white as I can get. So I click on this one under levels. This one, um, it what it does in Photoshop, it's the quick way to make any part of your screen white. Um, by the way, I did not really study graphic design. All of these is self-taught. So if you guys are like screaming on the other end here saying that that's not how things are supposed to, do, um, to be, that's just how I do it on my end and it works for me. So I click on this one and if you can see here, it's a little bit shadowed. So I just click on it to make it more white until I get it to the contrast that I like. So this looks pretty good. Um, and I just click OK. So once I have this, um, there are many ways that you can actually do this to digitize and make it a vector. Um, one trick that I used to teach is by using a software on or a, an app on my iPhone called Adobe Capture. It actually converts it into um, vector very, very easily. Um, and it's the, I don't know graphic design way and it works just fine. Um, but of course, after creating so many fonts, um, I've gotten to this point. I actually do it this way now. So I'll copy this entire um, canvas, go over to Illustrator. Oh, sorry, I'm on my, <laughs> okay, here. I'll paste it and um, I'll do image trace. Again, I'm gonna hear graphic designers on the other end of this <laughs> um, screaming at me for teaching uh, what do you call this, shortcut ways to get what you want. But you know what, it works for me, so I really don't care. Um, I'll click on advanced. Um, I click preview just so I can get an idea to see how clean it actually converts it. Um, and I'll do ignore white. So it automatically will delete all the white parts of your canvas, so like the paper, and it'll just keep the um, colored parts or the black parts in this case. Um, I'm going to zoom in so we can look at the edges. And because my name is Miko, I always look at the letter M, just because. Um, 
And you can play around with how much, um, what the threshold will be. So if you do 255, then it's gonna be pure black um, here. By the way, so if anyone out there is watching, do let me or give me ideas as to what to call this font and I'll make it available on the site today. Um, so here, I will keep it at that. I think that looks fine. It, I'm not gonna make this perfect um, rounded and clean edges anyways. I'm gonna keep the look as messy as I want. Um, less corners might look good. And let's see, sure, why not? Let's keep it like this. And then I unclick preview, trace, expand. Okay, so now um, if I drag this out, you'll see that it's all just black now. Um, the white's gone, each letter is its own vector. And um, looks fairly clean. Um, one step that I do after this is, so it's all together as one group. Um, I'm going to, I'm used to doing shortcuts, but just so you can see the steps that I actually do. Um, I'll ungroup them so that each letter or character or glyph um, is its own piece. So now I'm doing the shortcut. So A is its own being and B is its own being. Um, next. I'm going to grab the alphabet, the A to Z. Okay, it's not gonna fit on my page and that's okay. And I kind of align them this way. X, Y, Z, okay. Barely fits. Um, select them all and under this align, I align Again, depending on the style or the look that I'm going for, um, I might align the bottom edges or the vertical alignment, which is what I'm gonna do. So now automatic, each character is kind of aligned in the middle. And I think for now that should work, I think. Um, hi Nina, mix live, <laughs> love it. Um, okay, so. Then I do this just to distribute it because I want some space between the letters and that's just so I can visually see it better. So they are A to Z. And I'll do the same with the numbers. For font self, you wanna arrange them um, A to Z, zero to nine for the characters and I mean for the numbers. Um, same with lowercase A to Z. So I'm gonna do the same here, align vertical and space them out. Now, one thing that I discovered after I've been using font self and creating fonts this way for several years is that the software and even for those who use my fonts for Cricut or Silhouette, they don't like all these nodes. There's just too many. Um, and it makes it more difficult for them to use the fonts in their projects when they do craft stuff. So what I started doing is um, simplifying um, I started simplifying the shapes. See, I don't even know where to go because I use my shortcuts all the time. Um, so I simplify them, the paths, so that there's not too many nodes. So you can do it automatic so that um, Illustrator smartly does it on its own, or you can go to the extreme and just really round those things out. And this one looks not too bad either, but I'll return some of the corners. So I had 643 points and I'm gonna lower that down to, yeah, this one should be fine. Yeah, okay. Um, in this case, like I said, I'm just going to make this font available for free on my site. So I'm not gonna do my usual hours worth of work um, when it comes to kerning and cleaning up. Um, so this is the quick and dirty method that I do for fonts that I don't have in, um, enough glyphs for. So like in this case, I don't have a lowercase set. So I'm just gonna use the same uppercase for my lowercase. So, um, 
here's font self. Um, I love them because it's um, font for dummies. It's very easy to use. Um, so we're gonna start, we're gonna do uppercase. So it's a uh, make sure that you have it arranged, like I said, A to Z, and that you don't have any random objects floating around when you select them. So sometimes um, when you do the image trace, you'll end up with like small pieces of solo dots um, and you end up with more than 26 characters when you highlight them. So here I'm gonna do A to Z. So what I'm saying is I want you font self to create these 26 characters and turn them into um, A to Z alphabet. So make sure your letters are in order but that should be easy enough. So I'll click on A to Z. And there you go, A to Z, it's already there. I, it took like, what, two seconds? Um, and from here, I can go and scale them up if I want. So I can make them bigger um, or smaller. I don't know if you can see the guides. Um, so this is a standard um, height and um, if you've studied anything about typography, you'll know the baseline and um, you can adjust them, your ascenders and descenders and your X heights, however way you want. Um, and since we don't really have lowercase, this will actually be easy. Um, so I'm just gonna raise this since you know lowercase characters are the ones that have those dangly things underneath your baseline. Um, but I will increase this, um, a sender to make sure that nothing is cut off. What happens is if you have anything, so let's say I put the ascender here, this part of the letter actually gets cut off when the person uses this font in software like Microsoft Word, for example, when they type it out, the top part will get cut off. So you wanna make sure that nothing is cut off. Um, if it's really bad, Font self will actually notify you to say that. So actually, let's try that. Um, and it says here, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, it says one warning. And it says that the ascender should usually be over capitals. So um, you get notified when you make a mistake or if there's something that might be troublesome later. So I'm going to raise this to maybe, I need to make sure that my numbers are always um, in fives or zeros, and that's just me. Um, okay. So there you go. Um, and I'm gonna do the same again, and I'm gonna do A to Z lowercase because, <clears throat> sorry, I don't have a lowercase written out. So A to Z again, and I have it early. all the characters that I create. So when I do my own fonts, um, I actually have this template built out for myself just to make sure that I cover all the letters and characters that are required for the general um, public. Um, I have to include these characters if I plan on selling them on big sites like myfonts.com or creativemarket.com. Um, they want to make sure that you have all these um, additional glyphs and ligatures. Here are also um, pairings that you need to pay attention to um, to make sure that they actually look, what's the word? <laughs> Not awkward. So sometimes um, letters overlap. So I actually created this whole um, sample text for me to review. So when I when people inquire and ask me how long it takes to create a font, I actually go through each and every pairing you see here to make sure that the letters look normal um, because I do handwritten fonts and it's really not a measured, um, I don't do 
um, technical font. So it's I need to pay attention to it more. So what I do here in um, I go back into Illustrator and I I just realized, Nina, were you saying Mix Live would be the name of the font? <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so I, I checked to see how it looks like, right? Um, if it looks normal, it kind of looks a little too spaced out for me. So what I would do in this case is make the space. Yeah, you actually measure the space also. Make the space a little more narrow. And then I'll also make the letter spacing a little more narrow. I don't like how that X looks. So I'm going to go into the letter X. I don't know if you can see. I feel like the O and X are too separated. Um, so here's the great thing about um, font self. They actually have a smart kerning. I used to do all of this manual, each and every single letter. I would go in to make sure that they have the right kerning, but now we're going to do smart kerning and see how it fixes things like this. See how big that space is, it looks weird. Um, so I'm gonna click on smart. What it's going to do is it's gonna try and space and kern it based on some AI and algorithm that um, the the developers of this program actually figured out. Um, I love those guys. I actually tell, um, I can give them um, input about things to improve on on the plugin and they've actually made some of the changes I recommended, which I love. Yay. So here, I don't know if you noticed, but um, no, I'm trying to look for it. Where is the X and the O? Here, boxing looks better. Now it's too close together, right? So I'm going to space out the letters a bit more until I'm happy with it. And then widen the space. Okay, there. And again, we can't really see what it would look like because I don't do um, I don't have any um, punctuation here, so all of these are kind of off. But I think you get the point, right? So um, after I do this, I'll actually go back in. So again, like I said, this is just the shortcut. There's not a lot of changes that need to be made with this one since it's free, and I'm not going to really go into each and every single one of these pairings. But normally here, like I would say, okay, the apostrophe needs to be closer or um, F and O, they're close, too close together. So you will go into advanced and fix the kerning one by one. Um, that's the normal thing that I would do. Um, and this is also why I've stopped doing um, script or cursive fonts for others because <sighs> it takes forever to do. Um, print takes long enough time. Um, and it's worse when it's um, cursive. So I'm just gonna add more spaces. I still don't like, I think it's too close together. But for example, if I feel like um, this K and O can be a little closer, what I do here is you go into pairs and I look for the letter K. Okay, so it doesn't have a K and O, but I'll type in K and type in O and I'll say how close I want it to be. So I'm gonna be like, okay, 10 pixels closer. And I want you to kind of pay attention before I tab. I'm gonna exaggerate it so you can see, um, but it puts it closer together. So I can manually adjust every single pairing that's on here. Um, and I typically take time and do the manual pairing, uh, manual kerning for each um, pair that you see. So I'm just gonna copy paste again the, where are my pairings, sorry. Yeah, so here I will go in and say, okay, um, what letters can I fix? So Q and I look okay, Q, U, they look decent, but I review every single one to see which ones I can further adjust. Um, yeah, and that's that. Um, let's see, now let's go back and actually save this. Since Nina was the only one who recommended a font name, Mixed Live, might as well do Mixed Live. 
So I go into the info part. So this one is called Mix Live. And it's regular, so you can say bold, italic. If it's a family, you can go and edit that as well. Um, designer, I guess that would be me. And you can visit me on mixfonts.com, manufactured by Nicholas Mungong, distributed on mixfonts.com. I don't put anything about the licensing and copyright and demo text. That's all I do. Um, so I'm going to do one more smart fix for kerning. <clears throat> And this is going to be a free font on the site just because I don't have any of this, these punctuation marks here. Um, and just save. It's saved as an OTF file. And then I typically just convert them into, and it's going to get dumped into my 120 plus um, font collection. So mix live, I save it there. I can open the font too. And here it is, I'll install it. Okay, mix live, there it is, it's live. Um, okay, let me save this also. I save all my raw files, just in case I go back and I decide to add more characters to it. Um, I've done that before, like I've had all lowercase and I actually created the uppercase set based on the shapes from the lowercase. Um, I'm just going to show you what I also do because um, I mentioned that I have to create all of these characters in order for it to be fully sellable on major font websites. So once I create the uppercase, and this is Mix Adorkable, um, one of my favorites, and it's a recent bestseller, particularly around Valentine's Day. Um, so once I have the uppercase, lowercase, numbers, basic punctuation done, um, I then create all of these, and I'm so bad, I don't know what they're called, extended alphabet. Um, I first create these um, characters that go on top. So I have the... <laughs> In my head, I know the English of them. They're maragsa and malumanae and all of that. Um, and these are the things that I add to the glyphs and characters that I have. Um, I have these all saved. So what I do, for example, for this character, the AE, I actually merge um, this and this. So the uppercase A and the uppercase E, I merge in, and create um, the characters. Other people might actually write them out from scratch, but for me, um, it's worked out where I just merge and edit the characters here in Illustrator. So I have it done. So the same with the lowercase and the OE. I don't know what they're called. I'm so bad. Um, in this case, I've also created alternate characters. So um, for the letter O, I actually have an O here. Um, I so I create an alternate where there's actually hearts in the middle. I've also created alternate um, the numbers where I put in a heart or, so this is the normal exclamation point. And then I created an alternate one where the, instead of a dot, I actually have a heart. So you can also do that in um, font self where you have the option of switching between two different versions of the same character. So yeah, that's level two, and I can probably do another live or um, walkthrough for that one. And that's it. I guess we can end my live, <laughs> my first live here. Um, thanks for joining me, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.